Just so you are fully aware of what you are getting yourself into, everything in this video is a lie. Once upon a time there was a man who liked to think about things. He thought so hard he started to say things like, if you have not lost something, you still have it, and if you pluck a hair from a man's head, does that make him bald? One day he looked at a friend of his and quoth, this sentence is false, and the rest is history. The guy who was saying these things went by the handle at thinks a lot guy abilities of Miletus Greece 768 and was commenting on vids way back, even before this guy said things like, I am the light of the world. The reason for why the rest is history may not be easy to see right off the bat. This sentence is false. So what? In a normal conversation, we would assume that the person saying something like this was referring to something that they had said a moment ago. But in this instance, the speaker, Ebulides, is making a statement as a standalone thought. Upon closer inspection, it becomes clear that this sentence is false is doing something strange. Is it asking you to subscribe? No, that's not it. If the sentence is correct, then what it claims about itself, that it is false, is incorrect. But if the claim it's making is incorrect, then the sentence is correct in claiming that it itself is false. But we've just gone in a circle, and now we're back to where we started. Paradox. This may seem a little inane at first. Is it true? Is it false? Big deal, it's a sentence. But look at this from a philosopher's perspective. Is it possible to make statements that are true and false at the same time? Or even neither true nor false? What does that say about truth itself if we can't nail down one answer over another? Is the water wet or dry? Other common examples of the paradox include I am lying and there is no truth and I can only tell lies. Whatever your belief, the water can't both be wet and dry at the same time. So let's talk about how we can look at this conundrum to make it better. First up, the problem of self-reference. In the phrase, this sentence is false, what is this sentence actually referring to? As I said before, if it were a normal conversation, it would probably be someone pointing to something and say, this sentence right here is false. But take away the normal situation and the sentence is left referring to itself. This is what's known as self-reference, a word or phrase inside of the sentence that is referring to the sentence itself. A lot of philosophers have theorized that the problem in this paradox comes from this problem of self-reference and that if we were to get rid of self-reference we would be able to solve the paradox. There was a guy who tried to get around self-reference by creating a hierarchical concept of language where the levels could never refer to themselves, only back to previous levels. Which is great in theory, but normal language doesn't really work that way. Another way to get rid of self-reference is to add a second sentence into the equation two children pointing at each other. Jill is lying. Jack is telling the truth. With the two children talking about each other, we can see that there is no self-reference here. But if we look at what they are saying, the liar paradox still pops up. So even if you get rid of self-reference, the paradox doesn't leave the house with it. Another way to look at this problem is to look at the trueness of the situation. The term for something that is only true or false is known as bivalence. Bivalence takes the principle of excluded middle very seriously. What if instead of just saying the sentence is either true or false, we introduce a third option? Middle schmiddle. There's plenty of room in there for truth options. Neither true nor false. Excellent. We've given ourselves breathing room. Let's get home to bed. But hang on a second. What happens if we change the wording a bit? Let's say instead, like the video. Oh wait, that's the wrong phrase. Here it is. This sentence is not true. This presents a problem. Where before we had three separate categories, we now have taken our third category and lumped it back in with the false answer. Neither true nor false is just another way of saying not true, and we're right back where we started with only two options. This is called the strength and the liar paradox. What you thought was getting you out of it has just reaffirmed the problem. The idea of adding a third category that is neither option is what is known as the gappy solution. On the flip side, adding a third category that is both options is known as the glut strategy. On the surface level, this one seems pretty easy to debunk. If a couch is uncomfortable and dirty, it can't also be comfortable and clean. This seems like common sense, but it is important to note that there is a sect of philosophers that maintain dilithiism, 
which rejects the law of non-contradiction and states that two opposing things can be true at the same time, which is difficult to wrap the brain around. Whatever your thoughts on the legitimacy of the conversation, the debate on how to solve the liar paradox is one of live and active conversation in today's world. This explanation is an incredibly gross oversimplification of this topic, and you have been given the very basics only. Do some more research if I've tickled your interest. One of the ways you can continue your research is to watch this video right here. It might not be on the same topic, but it has all the hallmarks of looking into something with interest.